Jesus replied, a certain man hosted a large dinner and invited many people. When it was time for the dinner to begin, he sent his servant to tell the invited guests, come, the dinner is now ready. One by one, they all began to make excuses. The first one told him, I bought a farm and must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I bought five teams of oxen and I'm going to check on them. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. When he returned, the servant reported these excuses to his master. The master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go quickly to the city streets, the busy ones and the side streets, and bring the poor, crippled, blind, and lame. The servant said, Master, your instructions have been followed and there is still room. The master said to the servant, go to the highways and back alleys and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Hi, my name is Mikaela Tenney and I'm so excited that you are joining us for this reflection. As an introvert, it might surprise you to know that I love a good party. Now, I don't always love going to parties, but I do love planning and hosting them. I once went to a party with a friend, and after an excruciating long amount of minutes that felt like hours, I mysteriously found myself in the kitchen as the self-appointed dishwasher for the party. Now, my friends, I do not enjoy washing my own dishes, but it was infinitely better for me than just sitting and attending a gathering. So I don't love attending parties, but I do love planning them. Bridal showers for my friends, my godson's birthday parties, Christmas parties for, for my small group, I love all of it. When I was a student ministry leader, I loved planning events for my students, and even now, I work for a team that plans conferences, which I personally consider to be just an excuse to throw a really big party. But nothing is worse for the host of a party than when those you invite don't show up. You put in all this work and effort just for all your guests to miss out on it. It's not a great feeling. Quite honestly, it's how many of us as ministry leaders are feeling these days. And yes, I am equating church to a party. Can you tell I've been in ministry for a long time? But think about it. Church leaders pour tons of effort into planning this party on Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, what have you, only for half of the people that used to come to the party to now send their regrets. Now sure, some people have very valid and respectable reasons, but some have excuses that sound a lot like the ones given in Luke chapter 14. Sorry, I've got to work. Or sorry, the family's watching the game at that time. These are not the things a host wants to hear. And so scripture says the party host in the Bible then chose to invite all of the local folks who didn't get invited to the party. He invited them all. They went out to the highways and byways to bring people into this experience of the party. The church, which has been operating much the same for many years, is now having to rethink our parties, just like the host in scripture did. In that moment, the party host had to think differently about who he intentionally invited to his party. After all, the person who had to work wasn't starving, he'd just get delivery to his office. The person who had just gotten married was likely going to have dinner with their spouse, so they were good to go. But the people who weren't even originally on the invite list, they were hungry and in need of food. They were ostracized and in need of community. I bet you that party was better than the host ever even anticipated, simply because he began to think more intentionally about the guest list. As you reflect on this, I want you to remember every single day you are a party planner, a host, inviting people to the event that is your life. As the host, you have influence that you can leverage on behalf of your guests. So who's on your invite list? Who on the highways and byways of your life needs the resources that you have? Who in your community needs to be in your life? Who needs a seat at your table? As you think about offering a seat at your table, look at the books you read or the podcasts you listen to. Where are the voices of women, the people of color, disabled people, and people from the LGBTQ plus community? Where are those voices in the formation of your spiritual life and whose voices are missing? Where are those people in your everyday life, the ones who come from a different tradition, look or speak differently than you, and dare I even say it, think differently than you? Who are you inviting to the table? Thank you.